Welcome back to the Arbitrage Run Show with your host Donkey Teeth here and Kevin from Arbitrage Racing. Boy, we had a fun week last week, Kevin, with the maiden auction, our first maiden auction. And then, uh, you know, we had a nice bounce back in the actual maiden. Very profitable. It was fun, huh? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We've been really boomer bust in the in the maidens, which with them being so top heavy, this is not too surprising. But even outside of that, our little special event was a lot of fun. Might have to run that back sometime, right? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it next week, huh? I'm down. I'm always down for a live stream. Yeah, uh, we've already bred the horses, so Kevin's being coy there. We're gonna do it. Uh, I think so it's they just announced it, right? Is it Sunday night? I didn't even like read through the uh, the, the full announcement for this maiden. I, yeah, I assume it starts Sunday night. In the I US. think so. I think they just did Monday last time because it was coming off Easter. They right. Didn't want to have, to have people working. Um, the twenty fourth UTC. So yeah, that'll be. Monday, Monday, I guess midnight, starting that Monday. So you want to do uh, something similar? Will that work for you? Like uh, Sunday, uh, what is it? What was it? Like eight p.m. Eastern stream start time. Yeah, and then I mean, like eight forty-five, get them to schedule that Griffin for eight forty-five. I think it worked well last time. It does kind of box out some of our European viewers, unfortunately. But I mean, you can place bids ahead of time. Um, yeah. Or- find an American to do it for you. I feel like somebody's always going to get boxed out. Yeah. Unfortunately, like you said. Uh but yeah, that'll be over here on our Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv/arbitrageRun. Head over there and follow us on Twitch and then you'll get a no- notification when we go live so you don't forget and miss that auction. But we've also we've got these horses bred. We're bringing back three the the three most successful I guess breeds from the last uh, maiden auction stream, which was the the too much noise star phantom full here. Uh, that one did well. I don't know if you caught the the recap that I added to our stream when I posted the show last week, Kevin. But uh, this one did well. The star phantom too much noise full, and then the star phantom strider head one also did well uh and then what's the third one we're bringing back actually i think we might only be bringing two back uh because we were going to do the grandeur plan death in june one since that one has looked pretty nice but grandeur plan wasn't ready for a couple days and uh we got these these other ones bred already so um i guess four new ones we'll intro here really quick uh this one is royal publisher and star phantom i like that pairing what do you think about that one kevin yeah i mean they seem close to carbon copies of each other. So it should be a good match. Royal pub, maybe a little more variance, which never hurts in 3.0. How do you compare this one to the strider head star phantom? Pretty similar. Yeah. I think a touch more variance, um, from Royal publisher, everything else should be about the same. Yeah. Uh, so then we've got three new ones coming in from, uh, Supreme boom. So here's the first one from Supreme boom, the stud, which is Supreme polarity and ready, set, boom on the father's side and then on the mother's side we've got uh grandeur and figured it out so this is a pretty fun uh marathon bloodline here huh that one will be a good time um the only knock there would be i imagine we're doing what two thousand meters again for the griff yeah 2018 whatever you think i think two two is good um because horses like this are gonna dominate at 24 but 2000 is gonna be its fourth best so it gives them a, a better chance i know a marathon won it won it last time so there is definitely hope at 2000 um, I think that's a good middle ground. This is actually the only Philly. We, we've been running cold on Colts and Phillies. Not that it like is, uh, I, I don't know, super important these days with where breeding value is sitting at uh, with exclusives, but uh, it would have been nice to get a couple more Phillies in here. So that's the only Philly. we got five Colts in this pool. Uh, this is the next one, Supreme Boom and Evergreen Gates. I think that one kind of speaks for itself, right? Yeah, in theory that... I mean, should be close to the nuts at 2,200. Um, well, we'll see. I know some there is some randomness out there, especially with starting level. So if you get a good roll there, get it at like 490, this one could be a beast. And then our last one here is Super Seed with Supreme Boom. Um, so yeah, Super Seed, if you're not familiar, that's our Super Breed. It was the, the second Super Breed ever. Uh, coming from Diamonds and O'Head, uh, which is O'Neill and 
third head diamonds. So uh, yeah, pretty fun bloodline here, huh? Yeah, it's a it's a fun Z8. Um, and I think was this the first or the second breed for Super Seed? That first. This is the first full from Super Seed. Yeah. yeah, the maiden voyage. So it'll be interesting to see how how it breeds. I mean, at five sixty six starting level is is massive. Um, so in theory, that should pair well with the five fifty five from Supreme Boom. I don't know what Zed is saying the starting level would be, but I imagine it has a really good chance of being top of the class too. Yeah, I don't have it pulled up either, but uh, we do have a prize for this one. So we're coming back with another Z2 Legendary Colt. This one's coming from Third Head and Ruling Legend. Ruling Legend, I mean, I think most people are familiar with Third Head, right? Ruling Legend is a, a mid... Uh, it's got pretty nice variants for a Z1, right? Uh, like 1600, 1800 type horse. Is that a fair assessment, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, I think this one... It's an interesting match where you have variants on both sides, maybe a little more variants on Ruling Legend's side. And then that 18, 2000 distance preference should play well in a mid funnel for um, for a maiden. So it's a, a nice prize. Maybe not have quite the name that uh, last prize did, but I think with this blood, especially on third head on one side, it should be a good class one horse if you have any level luck. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to to see all of these run. That was another cult, by the way. Um, so again, we're going to do that on our Twitch. That's uh, twitch.tv slash arbitrage run. Uh, Sunday night in the US, I guess that'll be Monday. Uh, right when the Maiden starts, we'll start that stream and start accepting bids on those. If you want to go find them, I'll post it up on Twitter, the this list, uh, so people can start bidding. And we'll post the link up once Zed starts the uh, sets up the custom race for us, so you can see the flames on that too. Uh, and then we'll kind of dive in on that on the stream next week. So, anything else to say on that, Kevin? No, I mean I think minor tweak if we want to talk talk maiden. Um, it looks like they did move the qualifying races back to that conditional where it's under twenty one uh, races for each horse. So that that'll be nice. To have a little more exclusive races i know the risk there is with a 12 gate it may be harder to to fill some of the races but i mean with with only five races needed to qualify that should be a better experience yeah i like that i i did not like racing these new new class one horses against uh 560 level or, yeah. or even higher sometimes it's just the not a fun experience, I guess. But uh, and then also, it looked like they they said thirty five thousand dollar prize pool currently, which is kind of a nice base to build off of. I I don't know what's your what's your expert projection on where this prize pool ends up. Uh, forty nine k is my my yeah. over under. It I seems to be like we have this base. There's a lull for a week as like everybody's already bred or they're waiting for more information on the maiden to breed. Like why would you breed in that middle week unless you're degenerates like us? Um, and then it picks up a bit heading into into the maiden. So I'll say forty nine as my over under. Yeah, I'll take the over, but I think that that's a pretty pretty fair line. Uh, everybody gets you know the FOMO once it comes around. The problem is a lot of people I think don't get it until after it starts, and that's why we start with this thirty five thousand, uh, which is rolled over from mostly from last time, right? Yeah, that was the. I mean, it's exaggerated this time because yeah, they added the extra, extra day, day yeah, they after the cutoff. Um, so piggyback off of that. I think helps this one quite a bit. Yeah. So like uh, most, most of those already ran in the last maiden. So if you think about from an EV perspective, you have lower horses running, piggybacking off of fund, like horses funding this prize pool that have already run. So you're going to have lower horses running, higher prize pool. In theory, it should be one of the higher EV maidens we've had. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then we're also going to run the the normal promotion that uh, we've done, I don't know, for the past uh, probably like six maidens, where if you buy one of the horses out of our arbitrage UUU stable, uh, you'll be entered in a raffle for 20% of our winnings in the maiden. Sometimes that hasn't been a lot. And we've uh, we've actually subbed in a UUU horse with a value of, you know, like 0.1 to 0.15 Ethereum for that winner or this past time it was massive we had a, a great mm -hmm. showing in the maiden and i think two people ended up taking home uh what was it, about 0 0.25 ethereum uh slightly less than that i think it was 0 0.246 or something like that we gave out to two winners so we ended up giving away almost half an ethereum uh so and there wasn't that many people in right we had like the six the six people that bought horses in the live auction and then i think we sold maybe 14 other horses. So there was 20 people in that auction. You pretty much had a one in 10 chance at, at that one last time. We'll see 
we'll see how many people buy this coming one. Yeah, and something we were talking about last time with that one, it ended up being such a big prize for the winners. I think we, we ended up just splitting the 20% in two. I'd be curious to hear the the people's thoughts on if they would prefer having kind of more winners at 10% doubling it, or just have that one big grand prize winner. It made sense last time with each prize being like 500 bucks where it still felt like a, a big win, even if you were only getting 10%, but I'd be curious to get the public's opinion on that. Right, right. Yeah. Ethereum had spiked to uh, like 2000 uh, for that, uh, like right when we were doing the raffle. So it, it did feel like, yeah, let's give two people 500 mm-hmm. versus one person, a thousand kind of a thing. Uh, but this is the stable arbitrage you use st- sales. You can just search it here on Haku. Uh, we've got 15 horses left in here. Uh, so we'll be breeding more and adding more in throughout the week. But if you buy one any time between right now and uh, when we do the, the raffle drawing, you'll get an entry into that. Um, so uh, anything else? Oh, so we're, we, we're giving away a horse too. We announced it on the last show uh, to enter. You needed to subscribe to our YouTube channel and then leave a comment in the comments of that YouTube show from last week. So I've got this uh, YouTube random comment picker. I just put in the link from last week's show. Let's see if this thing works. Uh, No, anything goes. I I don't know. I've never done this before. We'll see. (laughs) All right. 25 comments. So 25 people left comments. Uh, You got to get one in 25 chance. Let's pick a winner. Hunter Faith. Uh, Congrats, Hunter. We'll send this. uh, Let's see. What horse was it? It was a... Final Marajo full that we were giving away last week, uh, which is Final Wave and Marajo. Just let everybody see. And then, Kevin, let's do another one of these uh, since we gave away a bunch on the Twitch. And then, you know, some people, like you said, can't make the Twitch. So let's start giving away some horses. Um, I think it was this Colt. Uh, The very best staunch and Final Marajo. Yeah this Z14 exclusive Colt. So we'll send that off to Hunter. Congrats on that. And then uh, let's give this one away. Uh, we got a Z19 uh, UUU Finney Colt here. Comes from Triumph for Unyielding, which is Triumph for Hours and Unyielding on this side and Triumph for per- Perfection, which is Triumph for Hours and Perfection on this side. So a uh, pretty fun marathon bloodline here for an elite. You probably land in, I don't know, class three, hopefully the top of class three um, and have a shot in... Uh, but well, yeah, maybe we can do this uh, for commenters and do it on the stream when we do, if we remember, and they can run it in, in the maiden. We'll see. Yeah. We have a lot going on. We'll try. We'll try to remember. Yeah. Uh, so to enter in this one, let's let's add another hoop for them to jump through. Since everybody's already subscribed to the YouTube, you're going to have to comment to enter anyway. Uh, also follow our Twitch to enter this raffle. There's only 25 people, so the more hoops we make you jump through, the less people seem to to enter. You're going to have a you know one in 20 shot at this one. So. If you're not already following our Twitch, it's uh, twitch.tv slash arbitrage run. We'll be doing the stream there. Might as well follow it anyway. Sound good, Kevin? Yep, that's good. All right. That was a lot of uh, promotional uh, <laughs> to start the show, but it's going to be some fun stuff coming up. So we had to had to get it all out there. And uh, now we're going to talk about some actual Zed stuff here. So on the docket, we've got X, XP tournaments that were just launched. Want to get your thoughts on those. Uh, we've got... 3.0 conditionals sounds like they're going to be returning. Uh, we bought a 1.0, another 1.0 variance freak named Notorious with a K for 2.4 Ethereum. This was probably what, like 10 days ago now. Yep. And then we also want to talk if we have time uh, about how to. This is just a discussion that you and I were having in our DMs earlier in the week, and I thought it would be an interesting show topic. Uh, how to solve this class one enigma where you know, right now it's just uh, not, uh, there's no incentive to run these horses once they get to 601. Uh, and, you know, you, you still want people to have incentive to have the best horses in the game, right? Uh, so it's just a, a weird, delicate balance and there's no easy solutions to, to this problem. So if we have time, we'll get to that. If not, we'll talk about it on the next show. So let's dive in now since we got a lot to get to. Kevin, XP tournaments first. Uh, what do you think about these XP tournaments? Like, you and I were talking about it yesterday and you mentioned that you thought the multipliers were too low. I didn't really uh, agree with it. Uh, but what, what's your take? I think in its current state, it's, it's underwhelming 
in terms of like you win one of these and you go up like two levels and you're, you're thinking like, well, that was the, the crowning achievement of this format. And I, I get a horse that's basically the same as when I started. Um, so that's where it feels underwhelming. I think it is important to remember that the current setup is only like halfway produced. And the fact that these really work well once there's that XP marketplace. And then suddenly the XP, yeah, it is coming into the horse, making it better. But you could also have some kind of monetary value on that win, assuming there is a value for selling and applying XP, which there should be some value at, at some amount. So I think with that, maybe that's why they're hesitant in, in juicing up um, the XP bonuses too much. Um, kind of planning for that era, which hopefully is coming on in the next month or so. Right. And that, that was kind of my response to you is it's like, and actually I think this really does tie into this class one enigma discussion that we want to get to. So we can kind of uh, loop this in together here with these XP tournaments, because I'm not sure that the, actually I, I am sure that a lot of people in the community don't understand the vision for XP, this uh, XP NFT, the Z token, how it all works together. Uh, I see people out there on Twitter, you know, saying that Z token was a complete rug, which it seems like right now, fair. Like that it's, it has zero utility and it's been around for a long time. I get the viewpoint and communication coming from Z, like it's rough, man. Like what we know, we're in the weeds. Uh, probably, I don't know, like every waking hour <laughs> reading through Z stuff, you know, every bit of content that comes out, we sift through, whether it's through Discord. Uh, but a lot of people, I think, missed this this vision. And we don't even have a clear picture of the vision because communication is just it's just constantly missing the mark from Zed. So here is is the way that it sounds to me. If I can tr try to dumb this down, I guess um, you're going to buy an XP NFT through the Zed website. In order to, to mint that NFT, you're going to have to use some amount of Zed token. You'll only be able to use Zed token to do it. So the, theoretically, there should be demand for this Zed token because if you want to sell this XP that you've earned, I guess we even need to step, take a step back from here, Kevin. There's going to be a discretionary pool of XP is the idea. So half of your XP or whatever percent goes to the horse like it does right now. And then the other half that you earn in any race or any tournament or anything like that is going to go to like a discretionary pool on your wallet and it'll be tied to your wallet. You can't do anything with it unless you mint this XP NFT. In order to mint this XP NFT, you're going to have to have Zed token. So immediate demand for Zed token right there. So... Then once you do that, you take, I don't, I don't know exactly how it's going to work. This is the part that's unclear and kind of, you know, frustrating when we're trying to, to understand the, the future of the game. We don't, we don't know. Like, do you just take that XP NFT and say, I'm going to place this on this horse and they get all this XP. Is it like a boost, a multiplier for that horse for a certain amount of time, a certain amount of races? Not sure there, but you'll be able to take that XP NFT and say it's a thousand XP put it up on Haku or OpenSea and somebody else that wants to increase their XP for one of their horses can come through and buy it. Or you can take that XP NFT and apply it to one of the horses in your own stable. Obviously you don't need to buy it off the marketplace. You've already got it. And you can just apply it to your horse and increase say ready, set, booms, XP rate. So in order for this system to work, XP has to have some degree of rarity, right? Like, People have to want XP. You can't just be like XP is falling from the sky. Nobody cares about it. It's worth like 0. 0.000001 cents. Like where is the incentive in the game to, to go out and play these tournaments? Like where's the excitement, right? You're not winning anything. Like, like am, are you following me? Is this making sense? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So then to take it to the next step and tie it into this, this class one enigma thing, the Zed has this massive pool of Zed token that's allocated for prize pools. And I, I think it's like, I, right now it's like $20 million worth valued at two cents or something like that. But Facundo said they, they're not gonna release that. They're not gonna just start doing these tournaments 
with no demand for the Z token, right? Because say there's a class one premier tournament and it's got, you know, 100,000 Z token prize. Somebody's going to win that and they're going to immediately go sell it all, right? And then the price just crashes because there's zero, legitimately zero utility and demand for the Z token. So in order to have this system and potentially overlay these class one races and and incentivize the desired behavior to, to make this game actually work, you've got to have a token sync, which is the XP NFT, which creates demand for the Z token and keeps everything functioning. So it's, it's really a complex kind of economy and market that they're going to try to create and they're going to try to to pull the levers to keep the value of XP in the place where it incentivizes the proper behavior, right? Yep. I, I think I think in theory, economically, it makes sense. The demand structure is the question mark in terms of what the price will settle at for both currencies, right? The Z token as well as XP. Um, but I, I, I mean, I obviously agree with the cadence. Like you can't, you can't start giving Zed prizes when Zed is effectively worthless without utility, right? So makes sense. We just got to be patient, which is the theme um, with, with this project. But yeah, it's, it's making us stronger and more patient human beings. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, not everybody, though. <laughs> not everybody is becoming more patient <laughs> and stronger. There's I'm trying that. And it, uh, it failed, and now they are going the other direction. <laughs> Burn it all down. Yeah. Um, well, the, you know, the issue here, it just always seems to stem back to communication, right? It's easier to be patient if there's constant updates and transparency. Like, I talk to my friends that are, you know, they're not deep into Zed. Like, how many people in Zed understand this vision that I just kind of articulated? Maybe 100? Maybe? Maybe 50? That's I mean, a problem, how they? right? How could right? They? they haven't, yeah, they haven't communicated well to the masses. So like, there's really no way aside from yeah, listening to what you just said and being well versed enough in the right circles to to be able to connect the dots. Yeah, and what I just said, there's a lot of speculation in there too because it's like right. yeah, we're connecting dots, and it's like I see the vision. I'm not positive that that's exactly their vision, but there's enough like circumstantial like Facundo said enough. If you read through all this Discord, there's like enough information to support this this idea, and it seems like. The, the real puzzle here to Zed right now is we need to want to be the best horse in the game. We need to want to class up and level up. Once you hit 601 right now, like we're saying, like, what, what do you do? You just keep donating to level up higher. And it's because we got this, this half game. But if they come in and they say, I don't know, like all of these, these, non-segmented class one races are now overlaid with a certain piece of Z token, or there's a juicy class one tournament uh, every single week that compiles. And there's this nice Z token pot or something like that, that incentivizes people. Like if there's enough value there, enough people are going to be playing. And then if there's enough fun too, another segment of people are going to be playing races soften. And suddenly you're not entering these open class one races and seeing all 650 to, to 630 horses against your 601, right? So hopefully people have to make these decisions. The beasts stay out of the $2 race. This is the the idea, right? Yep. I think that is, that's the picture for end game or at least the next phase of the game. And it doesn't work like right now because so many of the key components are missing. So you're left with this seemingly half-baked game because it is right like it, it absolutely feels that way and it, it is at this point they would tell you that it's not a finished product at all yeah um so yeah i think that that like, i really wanted to get that out there because i see people saying that you know Z token was a rug and all this stuff out there and questioning like this team doesn't talk about things that that aren't coming these nft can't say for sure, right? So something might might happen before their launch or something like that. But this stuff is being developed. Like they've said it, anything that they've said is being developed. This team has been very careful after the whole like breeding catalyst, John Lee debacle. Uh, they don't talk about stuff unless it's for sure on the roadmap, right? Right, exactly. That's why the, the vision seems to be more like this quarter you're getting this and not as much big picture vision because I mean, it's been yeah, held against them so many times in past regimes that 
Facundo is basically like, yeah, it, I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to sign up for that. Knowing this community and the accountability with the amount of unknowns they have is just, it'd be Twitter suicide. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, like the, the, I don't know that there's anything that isn't Twitter suicide for that. They can't say anything out there. <laughs> I think it is better just for them to, to not say anything or else they're, they're going to get killed out there. <laughs> yeah, the they're definitely trying that now, Facundo is at least. And then it's yeah. funny, the people who are yelling at him and yelling that he is responding with things they don't agree with are now mad that he's not responding at all. It's like, like, what do you want this guy to do? I would do the exact same thing. Yeah. Well, they want him to bring back uh breeding 2.0, which, you know, would be the worst. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. and it's to the point now where like, there's rarely anything insightful tweeted. Now it's just like the echo chamber of the same stuff being tweeted and like, Hey, why aren't you listening? Like this is a solution. So it's not like they've heard it at this point. There's no, gaining to for Facundo being like overly engaged until someone has a really good idea um, that is actually new and implementable, which I don't know, everybody has their opinion and everybody at this point is just set on going back to 2.0 or whatever it is that he's heard it. He's kind of, I don't know what his opinion is on it really, but he's definitely heard it. Hey, hopefully they've, they've heard us. We'll, we'll just keep saying it. Like there's just not enough breeding upside in our opinion to make this, this game loop flow in the way that we want it to right it's uh, like you you get how are freshly bred 3.0s ever going to be fun horses and maybe that's the idea I, maybe they don't want breed but it's a breeding game right yeah i mean that breeding is their biggest source of incomes i don't understand how you would not want to incentivize that and it, it's such a low cost thing to just have some random upside in in breeding and like like why would they not like anybody who would be impacted it'd probably be the people who have the best horses already and largely that's the ones who are screaming for this because it seems so important to the success of of any breeding algo is like have the ability to breed a monster out of the box like i don't know and it's only going to get worse people say they're going to age out yeah you're going to age out maybe some of the 1.0s but in general the average horse is only going to creep up in level right as time goes on and if you're not creeping up breeding at the same rate, the newly bred horses are going to only be farther and farther behind as this game gets to like in game state. So I'm, I'm really curious to see like how that game loop is sustainable. Um, they kind of like they see it as sustainable at 100K, but you don't snap your fingers and get to 100K. Like there has to be a path to the to the that state in order for the game to be a success. Right. You need that carrot to, uh, I mean, people like to gamble. Like you just you, like give them a little excitement and super breeds were sold as that, but they're not. Yes. It's, not it's, all. it's what, like, I don't even know the numbers one in a thousand or something like that. Like this is not a legitimate, I, I, I think cranking super breeds up like, okay, you don't want to touch the breeding algorithm until you see the full game loop and see that it doesn't work and you don't you don't believe what we're saying and what everybody else is kind of saying right at least crank up super breeds and and see how that goes like what's link them to to bloodline right so you bring back some of that value to these nakamotos genesis nakamotos that were rugged like there, there's zero doubt about that right people paid an insane price for these relative to the other bloodlines and boom they're the the trait that made them valuable is suddenly freely given away like at least bring back some value and link probability of super breed to bloodline give nakamoto's a better shot at it you know give them more utility in the stud barn um and then you know have it linked to each bloodline down the line and i don't know make it what what's the right number like one in a hundred on a nakamoto stud gets a, a super breed or something like that yeah, that, that feels fine. It's, I don't know. I don't know the right answer. That seems better than one in 750 or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. We're, you know, we're just going to keep talking about it on every show until somebody acknowledges us. We'll be, yeah, we're just like Zed Twitter, right? At heart, we're just going to keep, <laughs> yeah, we keep yelling until we get acknowledged. Because um, we no, think I mean, we're right. We, yeah, we, I mean, we see the vision and there's so much good to it. Like, I, I, I really do appreciate the direction that, 2.0 seem to be heading like i think the way that that zed has worked for you and i for a long time is like we experience things out ahead of the curve just because of how we're operating how our stable operates how big it has been right so like we start to feel things like right at the front end and then there's like this lag behind us of like 
the next biggest stables and and the other players and then the smaller and so it's like we started to see it like pretty quickly how breeding 2.0 was was taking a nosedive the value and it was just gonna gonna become exponential from our point of view so like there were some major problems i don't know how it would have worked with racing 2.0 whole different discussion but you know, I, I appreciate what they're trying to do, just trying to give some some constructive feedback on real concerns that that we see with the scalability of this game. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I think there are positive elements of 3.0 compared to 2.0 where like concentration of power was not is not nearly what it was, which is a good thing for the game. Whereas like, like buttes can randomly breed as well as <laughs> Nakamoto's. The problem is they brought the Nakamoto value down instead of having the butte value go up in like the lotto ticket fashion. I think that was the big gripe um, because I mean, yeah, we would agree and we benefited more than anybody that concentration of power is never a good thing. Like if us swag me and a few of the other top Z ones, people had like just wanted to form a monopoly. We like, frankly could have broken like the top end of the game. Right. If we just priced everybody out, like it, there would not have been any competing in 2.0 until people, I guess will use the, uh, what do we call it? Um, it's a souls souls term where it, it uh, keeps progressing. You, you breed down the, the line. Um, power creep? Power creep. Yeah, there we go. Had a brain fart there. Um, don't really understand power creep. But apparently, yeah, pacers and such would have kept breeding up to where it wouldn't have mattered. But it was a big risk with the power concentration that is not as big a risk in 3.0. That's a good thing. Um, but – why did they need to bring down the value of next in terms of starting level, things like that um, to boost up the other. It just seems like you didn't have to meet in the middle there. You could have just increased breeding value and not nuked the entire breeding system. Yeah. Honestly, I'm fine with nuking it. It's just, you know, have some awareness and realize that it went overboard, right? Like it's all about balance, right? And it's okay. It was way off kilter in one direction in 2.0. You made it way off kilter in the other direction in 3.0 let's find the middle ground. Let's find some balance and move forward in a, a positive direction. It's just, it's really hard right now with uh, the way that it currently works, but we really got off on a tangent here, which might happen on every show. <laughs> yeah. Event session. Um, okay. So let's see. Uh, oh, you, my other idea for class one, since we got on the class one enigma discussion early here was like, they're going to have to bring rake back. Right. That like the, it's got to be less than 10%, right? 10% didn't work. It just killed the game. Small rake. And then potentially, I don't know, have class one be rake free or you rake the segmented in class one, but like the open is rake free. Uh, dynamic rake. I think we've talked about it before. If people aren't racing in winner take all, then take the rake away from those, maybe even overlay those a little bit with rake from other places and kind of pull those levers kind of a thing to incentivize people to race in class one and to level their horses up, right? Something like that. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Raking is such a like a negative term, but if it's done correctly, it can, it can help incentivize areas that need stimulation or whatever they're trying to stimulate. Um, the fact of the matter last time is they just <laughs> went from zero to 100 like in the blink of an eye. And they didn't have like a, a game that was fun enough to be able to just throw away 10% at a time. There wasn't enough to do. Um, so they overdid it. But I think there are paths where you everything takes a rake in, like in, this, in this business, right? It, it's a very normal piece. You just need to have something dynamic enough and something fun enough to be able to sustain it. To justify it. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, like you said, rake has is, is a stigma. To me, it's like taxes, right? Uh, nobody likes taxes. Uh, we don't want taxes without representation. If I've got a, a, a uh, government, whether it's local or national level, that's providing me with some value for my taxes and everything is running great and everybody's having fun and happy, you don't mind contributing your, your piece to the taxes. But if nobody's doing anything and everything's on fire... Mm -hmm. And you got a gun to your head in this this uh, place you're living. You don't want to pay taxes. Like you're trying to you're trying to get food for tomorrow's dinner, right? <laughs> that's a that's a good comparison, actually. Like like Zed right now is tax free, but on your way to work, you're driving through a bunch of potholes in the road because there's no money to pay. <laughs> so it's gunfire, and you're it's getting held chaos. up. <laughs> yeah, like I'll pay a little taxes. Starving to, to death. Quality of life, right? 
<laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, just throwing some ideas out there. Anyway, uh, Ryan said in Discord yesterday, I was sifting through, uh, there's going to be 15 tournaments next week. 3.0 conditionals are going to come back with the Maiden. So I think that that's a good bone for the, the community, uh, right? What is what is a 3.0 conditional? What does that mean? Oh, the they took away the you know breeding 3.0 only races. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. I didn't know if that meant. Yeah, I got you. That makes sense. That'll be good. Um, I don't know what I don't remember why they took it away in the first place. I think it was just simplicity of the lobby, maybe. But yeah, those types are very different breeds than especially 1.0. So all in favor of giving them their own class, their own tournament, especially if it's for xp or whatever whatever it's for well i think it was a couple reasons they took it away i guess from my viewpoint they were pretty worthless in class one because you got super breeds up there and it's just like why am i entering these 3.0s it's just a bunch of super breeds and uh, like there's no difference between those and the segmented you know 525 to 550s or, or whatever and then also it's just confusing for a new user right it's like what the hell is breed 2.0 and breed 3.0 like you didn't even know what the hell you're like 3.0 conditional just doesn't make any sense right so um yeah i think that that was probably the driving force behind it it makes sense uh it's just like below class one i think it was too soon like eventually they should be able to segment mm -hmm. based on age right but the, all of the really good horses aren't aged yet so they need like another month or two to for our horses to start hitting 250 500 races or whatever then segment them and you you know age one horses now have a safer place, but right now they just got to call it 3.0 breeds. I think. Yeah. I guess the challenge I would have there is why not make it 2.0 and 3.0 uh, 2.0s will have a level advantage um, because it's, they just had a head start and the algo was a little better for base ability, but they're as different from 1.0s as, as 3.0s are. So, and they're basically the same breeding algo just with a level boost to start. So I don't know. It, it seems like I would have included those in it as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's not necessary in class one uh, to to have that uh, 3.0, 2.0 segmentation. And then in class two, right, there's really no difference. I guess it's just to bring value to to these new breeds. And um, I, it seems like they didn't think there was any reason to do it at all. And they're just kind of trying to listen to the community and what the community wants. That's that's kind of my feeling. We'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a win. Um, all right, Notorious. Last topic here, Kevin. We bought Notorious. Uh, I guess I should pull it up on Z Lead here while you talk about it. So we paid 2.4 Ethereum. You've had your eye on this horse. I don't know. Why don't you give us the story on Notorious while I pull it up? How long have you been eyeing this horse? What are your thoughts? Man, um, when when was it born? <laughs> when was it born? It was probably I don't know, over a year ago. I feel like it was it was definitely a 1.0. I mean, pretty much since it was when since it was born. This horse has been on the radar. Um, I think Thang Racing owned it and really had no desire to sell, um, or at least did not respond to my my blind bids for for over a year. But yeah, March this 13th, horse, 2022 was when it was born, so a little over a year old. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Right. This is one of those like right before 2.0 started. Right. I think it was. Yeah, four days before before. actually. Yeah. Yeah. This is when like think like a freak. With think Fred. like a freak. Um, so I think those were the two that popped on radar radar at the same time, largely because we had diamonds. We saw Think Like a Freak look like a close enough comp in these these races. We ended up buying Think Like a Freak, but this one came onto the radar very similarly in the fact that it looked a lot like our horse Festus with that rare combo of distance preference on the marathon side and just the super U of, of variance um, that we knew and loved with 1.0. So we saw that happening. It never raced a ton. Um, I think for a horse that's a year old, this is that is this good. It's it's actually quite lightly raced. Um, so there's still a little bit of an unknown. But when levels came out, I think it made sense where it was basically where Festus started, maybe slightly worse, um, which is about where I would put it. And I mean, frankly, there's there's three horses like this in the game in the class one level. It's it's Festus. I would put at the top. I put. I want more as the second best and this this horse is third and there's there's like not a fourth in this category so everyone knows by now the leveling um formula underweights variance at least from a winner take all standpoint where this horse at 700 would beat the brakes off of uh even ready set boom at 700. so saw that we saw it was a unicorn there's not really many of these we definitely overpaid in terms of do we think he can make back 
in the current environment for, I don't know, the next six months? No, it won't be anywhere close. So this is a bet on the top end restoring value um, in the game. And it's one of those things like if they actually incentivize the top end and level 700 means something, this will be a top two or three marathoner in the game um, by the time it's done. So it's just a bet on the top end. Um, and it was a decent price. We think we'll probably, uh, I bet we make one of that back, even if the game doesn't change at all. If it just survives a few more months, um, I think we've made back 0.08 or 0.1 or so since we bought it, making our way up through class one. And these are the types where we talk about right now, there's this dead spot. Once you hit 601, it has enough variance where it had, it'll win often enough, even against horses that are 40 to 50 levels higher. Um, I think you could pop it in like a Z sum simulation right now and see it wins as much as a horse that's 600 at, at this point. So it's not going to completely die when it gets to 601. We'll just have to kind of wear it at a, a 0% ROI for a while. And then it'll totally dominate once it gets to actually race horses of comparable level in the end game. Yeah, it makes sense. And it's fun to buy a new horse. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. And you see like in the current setup, you see all these, segmented races and like the there's like 551 575s that are that are filling and then you don't have a horse for it and you're like man i want to i want to play in these there's some race liquidity there so part of it is just the fun aspect um and yeah we we won a, a good amount from the maiden last time so we were a little liquid um and this horse just hadn't been for sale in a while so we did the haku dance with thang for a bit ended up settling basically i think right in the middle of what he initially asked and what we initially bid so hopefully they were happy to get some liquidity um I don't think it was a steal or anything, but I think if the game actually hits and they don't change the level formula, this is one of the best horses. There's asymmetric upside here. That's what we <laughs> like to say. I wasn't going to say it. We say it like every episode, but it's true. It's true. No, it's been a while. We haven't said it in a while. Uh, one last point here. I know you got a jet. Uh, you got to call in a couple minutes, but um, yeah. Th so th the critics came out on Twitter, of course. I posted this saying that we're still buying, and yeah, of course, this is a 1.0 variance horse. We're not buying 3.0 breeds, but you know, they come and like start attacking anytime that, that I post anything. I don't know. I, I guess I'm like honey for the bees, but um, you're the last bull remaining. So they just <laughs> treat you like Facundo at this point. No, Jake is out there. Iceberg is out there. <laughs> There's two of us. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much. Yeah, I actually am Facundo. Uh, I wear a mask and I've got a really good accent when I go on and make appearances. But um, no. So, yeah, we aren't buying 3.0 horses, but I guess I can present an argument for why that's a good thing and why one of the, the positives to 3.0, even though it doesn't have the upside that we think it needs is like, there's no incentive for us to go out there and search for upside 3.0 breeds, like the best of the best 3.0 breeds that rolled, you know, a 410 or a 505 or something like that. There's some really nice variance distance preference mixed horses that can be really good horse horses, 3.0s. We have no interest in them because we can, first of all, we can breed our own. We've got a massive supply of our own instable horses uh, that probably have really good mixes too that we haven't tested because we've got this massive opportunity cost right now with our time. We need to be leveling up the horses that we've got. We need to be breeding certain horses in our stable because they still have value at the in-house in breed price. Like we've got a lot going on over here. So that opens up opportunity for other people further down the rug, potentially new users if they can figure out the game. Uh, but it, it, I think it's it's a positive for the ecosystem overall that we aren't going in, in that direction. There is some value there. I'm not going to say exactly how much value there is, but there's people that are that are being successful right now, picking through 3.0 breeds that have been cast aside and sold for 0.01 to 0.03. They're profitable horses out there, right? You've seen that a ton. It seems like like the meta for 3.0 and where they become very valuable is when you can hit a good level roll and it has the stability to dominate the one V ones. Like you've seen, if you just look at the um, Zed racer leaderboards, like a lot of them up there are just one V one beasts from the lower classes. Cause class one doesn't have a ton of the liquidity, but they've, they've made their stable off of that. And you're not going to get these one V one beasts using 1.0 horses, right? They're, they're almost all horses that have the stability, have a distance preference within the 2.0, 3.0 range. And they've been buying them up and like we have not, like, we're not playing that game right now. So you're starting to see like there's different games to play, which is always, always great when you're talking scaling. 
Yeah, agreed. We just need a little bit more upside in, in the breeding. There's, there's got to be a little bit more balance. Bring some value back to the base ability that got totally rugged. These horses got sold for, you know, $30,000. I'm going to keep saying it, even though I said I wasn't going to. <laughs> anyway, end of, of tangent uh, for everybody that, that says I love breeding 3.0. Uh, I don't. I mean, I think there's a lot of good to it. I see both sides. Uh, but yeah, I mean, definitely think that we need some tweaks. Anyway, Kevin, I know you got to run. So let's wrap it up here. If everybody could show up to our auction, bring some questions for Kevin so we can fill the time in. Uh, and we're not just like babbling on like idiots. I know Kevin never babbles on like an idiot, but right. I take on that role. And I would power, power creep. I got, I got the term down now. <laughs> I'll clip that out. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, uh, twitch.tv slash uh, arbitrage run for the auction Sunday night. Follow Kevin out on Twitter at arbitrage racing. I'm at Zed Diamond Hands. Give us a like, uh, subscribe to the show, follow us on Twitch. Leave a comment and you'll be entered for that raffle on the next show for that uh, Triumph for Hours in Bread Horse. All right. Until next time, take it easy, Kevin. See ya.